So the mean room and board expenses at a four-year college is 9,126. You randomly select four, no, sorry, nine four-year colleges. What is the probability that the mean and the room board, room and board is less than 9,400? Now, up to now, we would have a little bit of an issue if we just stopped right there because our sample size is nine. They have to tell us that this is normally distributed or my sample size has to be 30 or more. So I read again and it says assume that the room and board expenses from your population are normally distributed with a standard deviation. This is from your population. Even though they don't use the word population in here. Your room and board are normally distributed with the standard deviation of 1500. Okay, so they gave us a mean, a population mean, and now they gave us a population standard deviation. And they told us this is a normal curve. So I know I can sketch my normal curve. I can put my mean right up here. I don't want to sketch my curve yet. So I only want to do it once for my sample. So N is the only other piece of information that I have. This is what tells me central limit theorem. That's what tells me central limit theorem. It means you have a sample here. It means we're taking the mean of your sample mean to do this. Because you keep selecting groups of nine. Okay. Um, if you want to change your standard deviation first so that you can do your sketch, it would probably make sense. So your standard deviation for your sample would then be oh, 500. Sorry, that square root of 9. It would then be 500. So we're taking 1,500 divided by 3. So now, if you want, do it this way. Add 500 and subtract 500. Okay, and then subtract and go the other way. So we want the probability that it's less than 9400. Is that right? Didn't stop me. I'm all up on this. Nine one two six. Yes. The mean. I'm off on the mean. I can't erase it, but I can put you to the side. That's your probability statement. I am sorry. Nine one two six is your mean. So let's start this again. So then you're going to go for. So since we're probability statement here. Write your probability statement out. It has to use the x, not the z, because this is an x value. <clears throat> so I'm going to add, only to, I'm just going to add to the right side. So 9626, and so 10126, and so 10626. Makes more sense now? So if I'm 9400, I'm somewhere in here. And I'm less. So let's get to me. More than 50% is my answer of less than 50%. More than 50%. So my answer should be more than 50%. So I'm going to plug it into my formula. My x now is my sample, my sample mean. So this is my x value. I'm subtracting, it's going to come out positive. Should I come out positive? Yes, so I'm on the right hand side. It all looks the same as before. I could put the 500 here, or I could put in the 1500 divided by the square root of 9. It came out exactly, so if it comes out exactly, you can just put the 500 in. This will give me my z-score. Again, my z-score is somewhere between the 0 and the 1. 
0.55 works for me. When I look it up, it is my area to the left. I can look it up in my chart. And it's about a 71% chance that, what is the probability that the mean room and board is less than $9,400? About a 71% chance that, that it will be less than if I pull out these samples. Okay. It causes your curve to be a little bit more condensed because we're taking your, we only divided it by three this time, but still, that's, that's big enough. Do you remember from Friday, as the end goes up, what happens to the standard deviation? When the sample size goes up, smaller, because then we're dividing by a larger number, right? So it's getting smaller. You're pulling it in a little tighter. Make sense to do this? All right, so the probability that the mean room and board is less than $9,400 is close to 71%. If you look at their interpretation, they say the same thing. So about 71% of such samples, of all your samples, where size n is equal to 9, will have a mean less than $9,400, and about 29% of those samples will be greater. They just took the flip side of it. They said, well, if 71 is less, then 100 minus 71, 29% will be greater. Okay. Of those samples, 71% of them will be less. Have a 71% chance of hitting it less than this. Um, basically, again, you can put this in your calculator. You can do this a number of ways. If you like to work this, normal CDF, be careful you're coming from the bottom to the top, so negative 999. You want to stop when X is equal to 9400. You're going to put your mean in here. If you're going to if you're going to use your x values, you're going to put your mean in here. You're going to put your standard deviation in. You can put it in 1500 divided by the square root of nine. Let your calculator do this. This one was kind of nice because um, it worked out evenly. So you can put the 500 if you like. If it's going to round, let your calculator do the rounding. And please, it is cut right to the answer. And you bypass all the stuff I did in green. And I'm fine with you using the calculator. If you like to use the calculator just to give you the z-score, and a lot of kids like just give me the z-score on this, you're still this up to here, but you're going to go 0 and 1 in here. And then you're going to pay. Um... Oh, that was wrong. How did we get the z-score in here? Oh, we had to put the z-score in. I forgot to put the z-score in. So here was 0.55. If you just use your z-score in here and you want your area, you can just do it this way and come out with your area. Again, be careful because you got a Tommy calculator. The calculator does different rounding rules than, than we do. If I round and tell it here, it's going to round with me here. So whichever way you like to use your calculator or you don't like to use it and you want to just use your formulas, I am fine with that. Just make sure you give me your calculator step. If you put something in wrong, I don't see it. If you made the mistake like I did before with the 9400 in here and you put that in your calculator by accident, I'm not going to see it. And chances are you probably did a problem after that. You're not going to see it either. So make sure you're able to see these. Just give me the step. All right, so you guys try try five. All right, so let's set this up. So you're going to set up your curve. You're going to set your mean here. Oh, right there. You're going to set up your one, two, and three. But before you do that, find your standard deviation for your sample. So. Estimate it approximately. What did you get approximately for your standard deviation? Anybody just divide that out? Uh, 
approximately, right? Okay, so you're kind of dividing by a little bit more than three, a little less than four. So Chris rounded it. So add those up, subtract those down. So you want more than six, 160,000. So that's going to put us over here somewhere. So I'm just going to subtract it down. So if you just subtract down here somewhere, 176, that's what I didn't do. So this is 162366. Six. So my 660,000 would be a little bit less than that. My board is really off. And we want the more then. We want the more then. We want it to go this way. So is my answer going to be more than 50% or less than 50%? My answer. More. So when I come out with this, if my answer is less than 50%, and this is where I forgot to subtract it from one. Okay, so put this into your z squared formula. I would put this in with that. I would put this in without the rounding, because we we had to round on this a little bit. Here's your population mean. Subtract this guy. Oops, sorry, backwards. I'm like not having a very good day today. And divide it by. I would put this in and let my calculator do it. Even if I use my my formula one from the calculator, put this in as your standard deviation. The rounding, as long as you show me where your rounding and where your rounding came from, I'm fine with that. But really, all your rounding should be done at the end. So you should come out with a z-score of negative 1.16, which says, yep, I expected it to be a little bit less than the negative 1. When I look at this area, my area is smaller than 50%. So I say, yep, I was supposed to subtract this from zero. So it's about 88% chance that I pull up a, a mean with a sample more than 160,000. I have a very good chance of doing that. Very good chance of doing that. Make sense? Hoping that the next problem makes a little bit more sense. Um, the next problem compares taking the, the random person from the population and samples of blood. So if you kind of take a look at page 268, you should be able to see the difference in this. And I, I want you to understand the wording more than anything else because. The hardest part is saying, which one should I use? So here's the thing. Let's see if I can shrink this down a little bit. Okay. The average credit card debt carried by undergraduates is normally distributed. I'm talking population here. Population for an average here. Normally distributed. It's got a mean. And it's got a population standard deviation of this. So I'm going to pull out my mean. And then we pull out my standard deviation. Now, I go on to read the question. What is the probability that a randomly selected, a randomly selected undergraduate who is a credit card holder? Has a credit card balance less than 2700 I want a randomly selected person. Where am I getting this person from? My sample or my population? Does it say anything about a sample yet? So where does this come from? My population. This is my average credit card debt carried by undergraduates all undergraduates they didn't have to say population of all undergraduates i have to assume that and it's normally distributed with this mean and this standard deviation this tells me this is coming from my population so i want what is the probability that x is less than 2700 this is the way we used to do this 
this is a randomly so a a what what tells me this a randomly selected person so i make my graph there's my mean 3173 there's my standard deviation I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the curve out. I want to know less than 2,700, so I'm just going to go down that way. So I'm going to take three with me on this, because this is the most important part that you can do, that you'll be able to do this. I'm using the regular standard deviation. Good. So if I go down one, I'm at 2,053. This is my population. So my... 2700 falls somewhere in here. And I want it to be less than that. Look at that big chunk of my curve, right? This is from my population. I knew that because it said a randomly selected person. From where? From my population. There's no n yet. So I have to use my beloved z squared formula. I have no divide by n in here. I'm a person from my population. So I take my x value, I subtract my mean, I divide by my standard deviation. Do I expect it to come out negative? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I plop it in there and I get negative 0.42. And I expected it to be between the 0 and the negative 1. I look it up in my chart and I get point three three seven three so what is the probability that i select a person from the population whose credit card debt is less than 2700 about 34 percent between 33 and 34 percent chance that the person i select from the population will have a credit card debt less than 2700 so this was all about my population and I know that because they didn't tell me anything about a sample. Okay, there's part two. Part two says you randomly select 25 credit card holders. You don't select one credit card holder. You randomly select 25 credit card holders. When they say this, that's when they mean n is equal to 25. And they really don't mean that I just select one sample, they really mean that I keep doing the mean of my sample mean, even though they don't say that. I keep selecting 25, take their mean, throw them back. 25, take their mean, throw them back. At the end, I take the mean of all those sample means. What should that mean be? Hmm? Nope, what should it be? Yeah, just the mean. 3173, three, good. And you're one step ahead of me. So my sample standard deviation should now be, Chris? Uh, 1120 divided by? 62. Okay, but the square root of 25, right? Uh, so my standard deviation here is going to change. Did you say 224? Yeah. Approximately 224. Okay, make sure they work out evenly. 1120. It's exactly 224. Good. So now, I make the graph for this guy. Here's my graph for this guy. I have the same mean. I want the same probability statement. What is the probability that this credit card holder is now not my S, it's my sample mean, is less than 2700. So I come here. I make my chart. I see 3173 minus 224. I'm at 2949. I didn't yet hit 2700. I subtract another one. I'm at 2725. I didn't yet hit 2700. But I could see that it falls to the left of this. Agree? Look at the size of the curve. Look at the difference between the size of the curve. Is this going to get me a smaller amount of my pop from my population or a larger? Is it a bigger part of my curve or a smaller part of my curve? 
smaller part. Look what it did. I condensed my standard deviation. I made it fall. I made that fall into here. I made that, that big curve squish right in there. So what would fall there is now falling on a little tiny piece out here. So I set up my z-score. This is where I have an n. So I use my sample mean and I use this guy. So my sample mean, my, my mean is still going to stay the same. My x bar is still going to be that. My sample mean is still this guy. The only thing that's changing is this down here. I'm 1120 divided by the square root of 25, which Chris told us was 224. So if you put this in, this will come out to be negative 2.11 which I knew it was coming a lot lower than the negative 2. So here's my negative 1, here's my negative 2. Okay. I look this up, area to the left. Look how small that is. It's a very small percentage, so I'm going to be taking those samples. And that sample mean is going to be less than 2700. I have to keep it closer to the mean to be, to be fair. Okay. It's not as spread out right? My, my standard deviation is a lot smaller. It's not as much varied from the mean as my population. I'm keeping it closer to the mean. This guy was fair. This guy is unusual. It's less than 5%, right? So we would say that's unusual. For me to select a sample whose credit card holder balance will be less than 2700 is unusual. Do you see the difference between the population and the sample? Okay. And how do I know when I'm reading this? If I'm reading this and this says a randomly selected person, this is a person, this is from my population, and I don't see an N. I don't have an N equals in here to stick under here, do I? Do I have an N equals in that situation? Uh-uh. When I get here, and they tell me select 25, oh, there's my N. So even without thinking about this, no N, population, N, samples. This is the key thing right here. The top part looks exactly the same, because your mean from your population is the mean of your sample. The only thing that sets me off on the bottom one is the N equals. There's my sample. My sample is just going to make me a lot tighter in that curve. Because remember, it puts that whole curve into this narrow thing. And it says I'm not giving you as much leeway here. Because these are your samples. On the flip side, it works a little better on the mm -hmm. other side. My, my area will be greater. Are we okay with this? Questions? So let me see if I can get some space here. Okay. Assignment. You can probably get, believe it or not, in the next two minutes, you can probably do the first four or five. Those are the easy ones. Um, just finding the mean, the standard deviation, one is looking at a graph. These are the more of the word, work problems. So 19 and 25, 27 will just change your sample size for 19. Um, 
so that you should be able to see this. I think 37 is a sample, is a randomly selected sample from your population versus a, um, a sample size. So I'm going to give you all tomorrow in class to do this. And you'll have plenty of time to get this done tomorrow. But maybe work on the first, like, two or three, four for today. I should get it done.